Here we are then, the brand new 911 992, the eighth generation. This is a very quick review. Um, I haven't got a film team here with me, so uh, but I thought you'd want to know what it's like to drive just from straight from the launch. So here we go. First things first, where are we? Well, we're on roads near Valencia. I drove around the track first thing this morning, and now we're out on some pretty cool roads, actually. So at launch, if you remember, we've only got the S model. So this, this is a Carrera S, uh, so rear wheel drive. Uh, there's also a 4S available. No manuals available at the moment. They will be coming later, but for the moment, it's this new eight speed PDK. And this car is loaded up with well, pretty much all the options. So we've got PDCC, which is Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. We've also got the Sport Chassis, which is a 10 millimeter drop. And then we've also got the optional rear wheel steering. I was really quite nervous before this launch because, well, you want the new 911 to be good. There's a certain sort of investment to it. I love 911s. It's a bit like your sort of favorite box set and it entering season two or three or four or eight in this case. and thinking, oh, can it really be as good as all those other ones? And then you know by the end of the first episode, is this gonna be good? You think, yes. And that's a bit like the launch of this car. And getting to the end of the pit lane of the circuit this morning, and literally that first turn of the wheel, instantly, yep, this is gonna be good. And as if by magic, here I am on track that morning, chasing a GT3 RS, by the way which is why these aren't exactly my most fluent thoughts, but you get the idea. Let's put it into sport. Straight away, what you notice is that wider front track and the agility on the way into the corners. The weighting and steering is actually really nice. The combination of rear wheel steer and this wider front track is really good. It's long straight down here, breaking in the pit lane. About 220 kilometers an hour. It just gets into corners like you wouldn't believe. That's extraordinary for a standard 911. Mid corner, just a little lift and then loads of power on the exit to really work it. Brakes are ace as you'd expect. Huge traction still. Really very quick as well. <laughs> wow. Anyway back to the slightly slower pace of the road through the orange groves or plantations or perhaps orchards. Yes, let's, let's go with orange orchards. At the moment we're in normal mode. The car is still involving. The steering's got proper weight to it. It's got some feel to it. You can tell what those front tires are doing. We've got a wider front track, which is really noticeable when you stand outside and look at the car. You can see those front arches have swollen. We've also got quicker steering, so it's 11% quicker, although only 6% quicker if you have the rear wheel steer as well, such as the agility that that adds on its own. The engine, we've still got a three litre twin turbo charged flat six, like the previous generation, but it's, it's got various changes that we've been into before. Power up to 444 brake horsepower, and even in a non-chrono 2S, It'll do 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds, which is pretty extraordinary for what is a road going non GT 911. That actually drops all the way down to 3.2 if you get a 4S with small chrono. One note of caution if you're about to rush out and slap down a deposit for a new 992. I did have a brief go in a 4S and the steering wasn't as nice. It was still precise, but it just lacked that lovely weighting and textural feel of the rear wheel drive car. So, unless you absolutely must have the extra traction of some drive shafts going to the front wheels, the cheaper, simpler Carrera S is the pick of the range for now. The interior is absolutely lovely, as you'd expect. It's taken this big leap on in terms of the size of the screens. We've got the screens up here as well, but still got the analog dial in the middle, and it feels, well, a lovely place to be, as you'd expect. The dampers are also much more, they've got more breadth of ability now. It certainly feels every bit you know, the GT car you wanted to in terms of an ability to cover distance and keep you comfortable. But then when you get to a good bit of road like this, my word, this is so good. This is in normal mode. And as you like the little bit of extra roll you get on the suspension, if we put it into 
sport, we get a bit more weight through the steering again. It's so direct with the rear wheel steering on this. It feels like such a small car. It feels so agile. We know that this has got a little bit heavier, mainly due to the heavier eight-speed PDK box and the particulate filter. But it doesn't feel like it's got any extra weight in it. The noise was one other thing I was worried about. And it sounds, it sounds pretty good. It's not a spine tingling, naturally aspirated engine, obviously. And from outside of the track, it sounded pretty quiet and sort of just quite breathy, but it doesn't sound bad either. It sounds much better inside the car. Let's take it through the rev range so you can hear it. So from 2000 RPM. linear. On paper this 992 doesn't look like a huge step on from the 991 but to drive it really does feel a lot better to me. What it feels like is the fact that it's in the 991 there were a lot of things that were introduced so we had the electric power assisted steering, we had turbocharging in that second generation, PDCC came in for the first time and that's a lot of things for a car to be to get used to, I suppose, for the engineers to get their head around. And it feels like all of those things have now come to fruition. They've been able to design them all into a really homogenous package in this 992. So they all work harmoniously and as one, seamlessly. And they've got their head around this electric power assisted steering. It's it's so good. You feel like you instantly know exactly where each corner of the car is how it's behaving, how much grip you've got. It just encourages you to drive it quickly, to lean on those tires, and because there's so little roll, it's not uncomfortable. For Given how little roll there is, you'd expect it to be uncomfortable. It's not at all. It deals with bumps as you'd expect a Porsche would, but because there's so little roll, it's just more insistence. You can get into the driving more quickly. You feel more involved. It's more interactive. Needless to say, the PDK box is sensationally quick. It'll be interesting to see what they've done with the manual, see if they've improved that as well. As you can tell, I really liked the 992. We always knew it would be quicker and more habitable, but the thing that surprised and delighted me was just how much of an involving, interactive sports car it is. And even more importantly, it feels involving at any speed. So there's a real sense of connection when you're just pottering slowly, as well as when you're pounding around the track. <laughs> I'm so happy that this is such a good car. 